good evening to everyone who has uh, come here or uh, joined us today for the very new session of Polaris Talks. Um, and a very warm welcome because it has been a while since we all have been meeting regularly on uh, Mondays and Fridays. And uh, no worries, but we have resumed our sessions on uh, uh, general anatomy. Uh, and today's topic would be histology of the muscle. And we have our uh, dearest uh, Dr. Ryan, sir, today with the topic. Uh, sir, good evening. How are you doing? Uh, good evening, Aishwarya. I'm finally doing well. Thank you. Thank God for that. And I can <laughs> hear the voice is not still clear. Hope you are yeah. <laughs> No worries. Um, thank you so much for, for coming, sir. Even though you are sick and not completely out of it, thank you so much for coming out for our students today. And students make maximum use of it. There are a lot of uh, huddles behind all these things. So today we'll move on to the histology of muscle. Over to the expert. Uh, thank you, Aishwarya. So without uh, wasting any time, we'll move on to the histology of the muscle. Remember that this is going to be on a session only on histology. The general anatomy of the mus muscle will be taken in a separate class as per the timetable given by the uh, NMC according to its CBME curriculum. So the first thing is the muscle cells, muscle tissue is made up of cells. And these cells of the muscles are known as myocytes. Myocytes are elongated in one direction and are therefore often referred to as muscle fibers. So the cells itself, these muscle cells itself, they are elongated in one direction and therefore they are often re referred to as muscle fibers. They con contain the contractile proteins that is actin and myosin which is responsible for the contractile function of the muscle. So the muscle contract it shortens, which in turn allows the movement of the muscle. So that is how a muscle acts. The contraction of the muscle, it shortens the muscle fiber and thereby helps in movement. So the different aspects of uh, the muscle fibers are divided into sarcolemma, sarcoplasm, sarcoplasmic reticulum and sarcosome. Each muscle, remember this point, each muscle is closely invested by connective tissue that is continuous with that of another uh, around the muscles around it and because of this each muscle fiber is closely invested by connective tissue which is continuous with that of the muscles around it so single muscle fiber gets uh, joined together with other muscle fibers because of this the force of contraction the force generated by the muscle fiber is increased because of this action that is the of the connective tissue the, this property of the connective tissue now, there are three types of muscular tissue in general. Whenever we talk about muscular tissue, we talk about three types. They are the skeletal muscle fibers, the smooth muscle fibers, and the cardiac muscle fibers. The skeletal muscle fibers are mainly present, as the name suggests, they are mainly present in the skeletal tissue. So, they are present in relation to the skeleton uh, of the body, and hence they are uh, more commonly seen in the limbs, upper limb and lower limbs. And hence, they are known as skeletal muscle. Um, when it is examined under the microscope, these muscle fibers, the skeletal muscle fibers, they have prominent striations. So, striations, prominent striations are present because of which these are otherwise known as striated muscle fibers. So, skeletal muscle fibers, because of the presence of striations, are known as striated muscle fibers. On the other hand, smooth muscle fibers, as you know, because they do not have striations, they are called as non-striated muscles or smooth muscle fibers. These, rather than being present at the periphery, that is in the limb, they are more related to the organs. They are present within the viscera and uh, they are not under our control. Remember, most of the skeletal muscle fibers are under our control. Smooth muscle fibers are not under our control. The third group of muscles is the cardiac muscle fibers and the speciality of cardiac muscle fibers is that it has features of both the skeletal muscle fibers as well as smooth muscle fibers. It is present as the name suggests exclusively in the heart. It resembles smooth muscle fibers in being it is involuntary. Smooth muscle fibers are involuntary but they resemble the uh, skeletal muscle fibers in being striated muscle fibers. So 
to summarize skeletal muscle fibers they are more commonly seen in the periphery that is the upper and the lower limb they are uh, striated muscle fibers and they are under our control that is voluntary muscle fibers smooth muscle fibers on the other end on the other hand are present more in the viscera they do not have any striations and hence they are called as non striated mus uh, striated muscle fibers and that also known as smooth muscle fibers they are uh, involuntary cardiac muscle fibers are exclusively present in the heart they have features of both skeletal as well as smooth muscle fibers in that they do not uh, they are not under our control that is why they are involuntary similar to smooth muscle fibers and they are uh, striated muscle fibers that is similar to skeletal muscle fibers so coming to the microscopic features of skeletal muscle fibers first so these muscle skeletal muscle fibers are essentially cylindrical fibers each fiber now you can see here multiple muscle fibers are there each fiber is actually a syncytium or a group of muscles uh, which are running along its length with numerous nuclei you can see so many nuclei are present which are located peripherally they are not located in the center they are more located at the periphery. The cytoplasm is filled with numerous fibrils and these fibrils are known as myofibrils. So you can see each myofibril making up a muscle fiber. So these are cylindrical fibers. They are actually a syncytium with hundreds of nuclei running along its length. And these nuclei are usually seen in the periphery, uh, unlike other cells where it is, uh, where it is present in the center. And the uh, cytoplasm is made up of numerous longitudinal fibrils known as myofibrils. Then coming to the other features of skeletal muscle fibers. So in the transverse section, now as you can see this transverse section through the muscle, the myofibrils appear as if they are arranged in a group of fields. It looks like a group of paddy fields here. And these are known as fields of conhems. So this can come as a... a uh, short answer or uh, MCQ. So these are known, the muscle fibrils, they are known as, uh, when they are arranged in this group, they are known as fields of conhems. The most striking features is the presence of transverse striation. And after you stain these fibers with hematoxylin as well as eosin, two, uh, two types of bands appear. That is the A band, that is the dark bands, and I bands, that is light bands, easy to remember. Dark bands, the second alphabet is A, so dark bands, A bands, anisotropic bands, I bands, light bands, light, the second alphabet is I, so I bands. And numerous mitochondria and glycogen is present and this glycogen is required for the energy that is required for the contraction of the skeletal muscle because we know that the skeletal muscles have to contract, they are voluntary under our control. Now going to still further deeper into the microstructure of the muscle fibers, you have to know that the muscle fibers are arranged in bundles or fascicular. You can see in this picture, there are multiple bundles of muscle fibers. They are attached together. And this there is a connective tissue which surrounds these bundles and helps in that group of muscles to contract together. So within the muscles, the muscle fibers are arranged in the form of fasciculi or bundles. So each muscle fiber is closely guarded by connective tissue and each muscle fiber is surrounded by this delicate. So you can see that each muscle fiber is surrounded by this delicate uh, connective tissue and that is known as endomycium. So this is a muscle fiber. Muscle fiber. It, it is surrounded by connective tissue. This is known as endomycium. Then the individual fascicles, that is the fasciculi, are surrounded by stronger sheath of connective tissue and that is known as perimycium. So endomycium was surrounding this single fiber. These group of fibers, the fasciculi, they are surrounded by connective tissue and that is known as perimycium. And multiple bundles of uh, perimycium are surrounded by a covering and that is known as epi epimycium. So endomycium perimycium and then the entire thing together is called as epimycium. At the junction of the muscle with a tendon of the fibers of the endomycium, the perimycium and epimycium become continuous with the fibers of the tendon. So important point again to concentrate on what is endomycium, what is perimycium, what is epimycium. 
Endomycium covers individual muscle fiber. Groups of or bundles of muscle fibers are surrounded together by uh, connective tissue that is known as perimycium. And the entire muscle fiber groups, the fasciculi, together are covered by connective tissue known as uh, epimycium. Next, we come to the structure of the myofibrils, the individual fibers. Like I told you, there are the two bands, that is the light band, that is I band, and an alternating A band, that is the dark band. Running across this I band, there is a thin dark line, and that is known as the Z band. So this Z band is nothing but uh, um, run, uh, through the I band, there is a um, through the middle of the I band, there is a thin dark line which runs through it and that is known as Z band. Through the Z band, there is, now this is the Z band, through the Z band in the midline, there can be another thin line made out and that is known as the M band. So we had the I band through the middle of which runs the Z band and through the Z band, there is another line and that is known as the M bands. These appear throughout the muscle transversely. The part of the muscle that is situated between the two Z bands is called as a sarcomere. So from one Z band to the other Z band, that is known as a sarcomere, the individual muscle fiber unit. So I band and um, A band, that is the light band and the dark band, through the middle of the I band runs a band known as the Z band through the middle of the Z band runs the M band. The fibers, the individual unit is called as a sarcomere and it extends from one Z band to the other Z band. Then there are other proteins that are present in a skeletal muscle other than actin and myosin. So one is actinin. So far we are talking about actin. Now we are coming to actinin, then coming to myo uh, myomesin, titanin and desmin. So actinin is present more in the region of the Z disc. So along the Z band, actin is present. It binds the tails of the actin filaments to this disc. So because it binds the actin filaments to the disc, so related to it, easy to remember, actinin. Then coming to myomesin, it is present in the region of the M band. Here it binds the tails of the myosin filaments to the disc. So actinin was binding the tail of the uh, actinin fibers to the disc. Here, the myomesin is binding the myosin fibers, the tail of the uh, tail ends of the myosin filaments to the disc. The, there is a link between the myosin filaments to the Z disc, and this is known as titin. And last one is desmin, which is present in the cytoskeleton. So, before we move on to a unit called as uh, to the next unit, we have to understand what is a muscle triad. So muscle triad is an important uh, entity. The sarcoplasm of the muscle fiber contains an elaborate system of tubules and this is known as sarcoplasmic reticulum. So you can see here there are sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this is the direction of the muscle fiber. So longitudinal direction of the muscle fibers. And you can see the sarcoplasmic reticulum going in that direction. Then there are some fibers which are running transversely, transverse to the longitudinal direction. That is the A band and I band. And that is encircled by a middle tube known as T tubules. So this I band, A band and the T tubule together are known as the muscle triad. So at the level of every junction between an A band and I band, the myofibril is encircled by three closely connected tubules that constitute a muscle triad. So this is nothing but the upper end and lower end of the muscle triad with a middle end, middle band known as the T tubule. Here you have to understand the differences between the red muscle as well as uh, red muscle fibers as well as white muscle fibers. The red muscle fiber is rich in myoglobulin and hence, and the cytochrome, and hence it has that red color. White muscle fiber has less myoglobin and cytochrome, and hence it is white in color. The red muscle fiber has diameter which is less defined with less defined striations, and the nuclei are not always placed at the periphery. Remember, we spoke that in a striated muscle fiber, the nuclei are usually placed in the periphery. So in the red muscle fibers, 
the not only are the striations not well uh, def, uh, no, de, well demarcated, the nuclei may not be present at the periphery. In white muscle fibers, they are broader with well-defined striations and the nuclei are usually present at the periphery, just like a normal skeletal muscle fibers. The volume of sarcoplasm in red muscle fibers are more than the myofibril. Sarcoplasm contains more of glycogen. In white my uh, muscle fibers, sarcoplasm contains less of glycogen. Numerous mitochondria are present, but sarcoplasmic reticulum is less extensive in case of red muscle fiber. Few mitochondria are present with extensive sarcoplasmic reticulum. Important point here is slow and continuous contraction. They are not easily fatigued. That is the red muscle fibers and the white muscle fibers are easily fatigued because there is rapid contraction. The red muscle fibers, remember they are red, so they have rich blood supply. White muscle fibers have poor blood supply. The red muscle fibers are usually most commonly seen in postural muscles, which have to remain contracted over a long period of time. And white muscle fibers are those muscles which are responsible for active movements like extraocular muscle and flight muscles in case of birds, which require rapid contraction. Like, like your muscles of the eye, they are required for the rapid movement of the eye. So very important point to know the difference between red muscle fibers and white muscle fibers. <clears throat> Next, moving on to the blood vessels and lymphatics. Just remember that the main artery to the muscle enters the muscle through the neurovascular uh, neurovascular hilus. So whatever the muscle, it, uh, the artery, it enters the artery through the neurovascular hilus. The veins leave through the neurovascular hilus and the nerves also enter through the ne neurovascular now, the nerve supplying a muscle enters along with the blood supply and then divides into a number of muscle branches. You can see uh, nerve branches. You can see number of muscle branches. And these uh, are run through the connective tissue of the perimysium and endomysium and reach individual muscle fibers. So you can see the nerve reaching individual muscle fibers. Then coming to the structure of a motor end plate. Now you can see here the nerve. Uh, it has a. It is covered by a myelin sheath. As it enters the muscle fibers, it breaks up in. It loses its myelin sheath here. It breaks up into number of branches, and each of these branches is now naked. It is not covered by myelin sheath, and it gets uh, elevated into the muscular element, uh, and this plate where it enters is called as the sole plate. So you can see here, this area is called as the sole plate. This naked axon terminal along with the sole plate, so the nerve, which is naked without the myelin sheath, it enters the muscle fibers and that is known as the sole plate. Together, they are known as the motor end plate. So motor end plate, why, why this is important? <coughs> the motor end plate is, this is where the um, acetylcholine will enter the muscle fibers and is responsible for the contraction of the muscle. So this is the motor end plate where the action takes place. So that is about the skeletal muscle. Next, we move on to cardiac muscle. So first thing that we need to know is what are the similarities between cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle. Like we said, both cardiac muscle as well as skeletal muscle are elongated muscle fibers. Both have elongated muscle fibers within which are numerous fibers. Both have transverse striations. Both have A, I, Z and H bands. The connective tissue and the capillary network are similar to those of the um, skeletal muscle fibers. And here again, actin and myosin are present. Filaments are present. So most of the characteristics of cardiac muscle is present except that uh, uh, of the skeletal muscle is present, except that uh, cardiac muscle fibers are involuntary, like smooth muscle fibers, whereas skeletal muscle fibers are voluntary muscle fibers. So differences between the cardiac and skeletal muscles are the cardiac muscles do not run in um, this parallel formation, just like how skeletal muscle, you can see parallel, uh, uh, parallel network of uh, muscle fibers running here. They branch and anastomose with other network mus muscle fibers to form a network. Chain of cardiac muscle cells have each with their own nucleus. 
and the nucleus unlike skeletal muscle when the nucleus is located at the periphery here the nucleus is located in the center of the cell the sarcoplasm is abundant and contains numerous large mitochondria unlike skeletal muscle where the mitochondria are relatively few myofibrils are also relatively few here and it resembles the cardiac muscle fiber resembles more of a red variety of skeletal muscle fibers so these are the uh, differences between skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle lastly we come to the smooth muscle fibers now we finish skeletal muscle we finish cardiac muscle fiber smooth muscle fibers are again spindle shaped cells and these muscles are also called as non striated muscles because unlike skeletal muscle fibers they do not have any striations the nucleus is oval or elongated and again here unlike skeletal muscle fibers the nucleus is located in the center just like cardiac muscle fibers um the long there are longitudinal striations but no transverse striations the cells are arranged in bundles the muscle fiber cells are usually arranged in bundles or fasciculi just like in um, skeletal muscle fibers and aggregation of these muscles are possible because of collagen reticular fibers and elastic fibers that hold all these myocytes that is the smooth muscle cells together so they are responsible for holding the muscle cells together so what are the main differences between all these three groups of muscles now histologically so muscle fiber in skeletal muscle is long cylindrical and unbranched so it is long cylindrical and unbranched in cardiac muscle it is sh short narrow and branched in smooth muscle it is spindle shaped and unbranched control the skeletal muscle is voluntary cardiac and smooth muscles are involuntary location the skeletal muscle is usually located i told you in the peripheries in the limbs and in the um, upper limbs and lower limb they can also be present in the tongue esophagus and diaphragm the cardiac muscle is present in the heart pulmonary veins superior and inferior vena cava related to the heart the smooth muscle is present in the vessels organs and viscera striations are present which are well defined in skeletal muscle poorly defined in cardiac muscle and in smooth muscle there are no striations present at all nuclei remember in skeletal muscle they are located they are flat and located at the periphery because they are located in the periphery they have to be flat in the cardiac muscle it is present single oval and in the center in the smooth muscle it is similar single oval and present in the center the sarcoplasmic reticulum is present in case of skeletal muscle fibers skeletal present in cardiac muscle and absent in smooth muscles intercalated disc absent in skeletal muscle present in cardiac muscle and absent in smooth muscle and regeneration of injury very important is seen limited after an injury if whether the muscle can regenerate is seen limited uh, capacity in skeletal muscle not seen in cardiac muscle and seen in smooth muscles so the smooth muscle contains plasma membrane and each of these uh, plasma membrane Uh, between each of these cells there is gap junctions adjacent to each muscle cell there are gap junctions and longitudinal striations are seen due to the presence of delicate monofilaments actin and myosin are there with no ordered arrangement in the striated muscles and troponin is not present so most of these smooth muscles are present in hollow viscera and these hollow viscera can be intestine can be urinary bladder can be uh, uterus it is also present in tubes like arteries veins bronchi ureters it is present in the muscles that constrict the uh, constrict and dilate the pupils it can be present in, it is present in the orbit that is orbitalis in the upper eyelid that is muller's muscles in the prostate in the skin of the scrotum that is darter's muscle in the skin that is the erector pili muscle so goosebumps uh, the muscle that is responsible is that of the smooth muscle and the, if the name of the muscle is asked then it is erector pili muscle so smooth muscle is present in the hollow viscera like um, urinary bladder uterus tubes like arteries and veins muscles that constrict and dilate the pupils orbitalis in the upper eyelid in the prostate in the skin of the scrotum and in the skin erector pili muscles there can be variations in the arrangement of 
uh, smooth muscles of the uh, in the arrangement of smooth muscles in the different organs. They may be present in the um, gut in the esophagus where there is an inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle. So in the esophagus, there is inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle. Within the ureter, they, they are arranged in such a way that there has to be some amount of peristalsis. So the arrangement is reversed where the longitudinal is inside and the circular is outside. So in the esophagus, the smooth muscles are arranged such that there is inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle. And this is true for the almost the entire GIT from esophagus up to the rectum, where there is inner inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle. In the ureter, there is the inner longitudinal muscle and outer um, outer layer of circular muscle. In uh, the urinary bladder, there may be three layers: inner and outer longitudinal uh, layer with a middle circular layer. So, in the urinary bladder, there is an inner and outer longitudinal layer and in between the bread of longitudinal muscle there is a jam of circular muscle fibers then there is bile duct in which uh, um, a thick layer of circular muscle may be there in the segment forming the tube contraction of the sphincter will occlude the tube and in the skin in some places the smooth muscle form narrow bands the innovation of the smooth muscle is both by sympathetic as parasympathetic muscle and they have opposite effect. For example, in the eye, in the iris, parasympathetic stimulation causes constriction of the pupil and sympathetic stimulation causes dilatation of the pupil. So it can have opposite effects. That is the sympathetic and parasympathetic effects. Blood vessels and lymphatic, the density of blood vessels is much less than in skeletal muscles. And finally, there are some swells called as myoepithelial cells. The specialized cells called as myoepithelial cells where there is actin and myosin. They help to squeeze. These uh, myoepithelial cells are located near the um, glands, around the glands. And these cells, when they contract, they help to squeeze out the secretions from the glands. They may be stellate, forming baskets around the SNI or fusiform. And they are innervated by autonomic nerves. So with this, we come to the end of histology of muscle. Actually, histology, according to the CBME curriculum, uh, histology of muscle and bone is supposed to be taken in one class. Uh, we have divided it into two separate sessions because we felt that taking, uh, again, histology of muscle as well as bone would be too much for one class. So actually, if you divide it, it is nicely. It is half an hour for um, bone and half an hour for muscle. And that is why we split it easy to remember so i we we come to the end of the theory aspect we'll discuss a few questions and i would like to bring uh, aishwarya in here uh, hello sir thank you so much thank for you. that uh, insightful class i'm so, sorry for uh, my voice in between i was struggling a little uh, no, sir it's totally understandable we get it no problem <laughs> please get well soon so yes. anybody, any questions? So if you all don't have any questions, I have a few questions for you. So if anybody is there uh, who wants to attempt the answers, can uh, try and give it a go. So you hear that you have secured the highest marks in your first year anatomy university exams, and you get goosebumps hearing the news. What kind of muscle is responsible for this? Guys, it's your time to attempt. Please do post it in the chat box. Yes, our own Sai has replied as smooth muscle, sir. Uh, good. Smooth muscle, I uh, can you be more specific? The answer is perfectly right. The, that was the answer I was looking for. Can you be specific as to which smooth muscle? Name of the muscle. Sai, you can come on to the mic if possible. Otherwise, you can post it in the chat, whatever is your convenience. Can you unmute yourself? Is it possible, Sai? Okay, no problem. Even Sai is not feeling well, sir, today. Okay, They're no problem. Well then, then I de definitely understand. 
<laughs> so and the it, answer that I was looking for is erectile pile. Erector pili muscle. Yes, good. So important point to remember here is that it is smooth muscle. Yes, erector pili and all is fine. But for this chapter, to understand the difference <clears throat> between the skeletal muscle, the smooth muscle and cardiac muscle, it is a smooth muscle. Next, we move on to you exercise your biceps regularly in the gym and notice that there is significant enlargement of the muscle after a couple of months. This enlargement of skeletal muscle is due to enlargement of existing fibers, formation of new fibers, replacement of skeletal muscle by smooth muscle, increase in fat content. Anybody who would like to post your answers? Yes, I think uh, somebody should attempt. This is some one of the favorite uh, uh, activities, going to the gym and uh, <laughs> using, doing bicep curls. Why exactly do you get those biceps? I think they never have thought about that, I think so. Yeah, they only think I want big biceps, but they've never thought why those biceps come. Satish, Sai, anyone who would like to answer? Just give it a try. It's okay if, if we're going wrong. Yes, okay, Satish and uh, Satish also eight. Sai Vigneshwar both say that it is A. Yes, you're right. It is enlargement of existing fibers. Just by doing biceps curl, you don't get new muscle fibers. Obviously, there is no replacement of skeletal muscle by smooth muscle because we know that in the periphery, it is only skeletal muscle. Smooth muscle doesn't come there. Uh, smooth muscle is more in the viscera. And uh, by doing biceps curls, you can't convert fat into muscle. In the same way, um, uh, you don't convert the muscle into fat. Just like that, you should remember when somebody tells you that I go to the gym to convert my fat into muscle, that is not possible. It is you lose the fat and build up the muscle. Muscle can become fat. Fat can become muscle. This is a common thing I hear people talk about. I will convert my fat into muscle. Not possible. Next, a 15-year-old boy presents with a swelling in the right calf muscle, which has been progressively increasing in the last five months. On examination, the swelling measures 4 into 6 centimeters smooth in consistency, histopathological examination reveals it to be rhabdomyosarcoma. This swelling is arising from smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, bone. From Anyone where is this it? swelling arising? Again, this is uh, the whole point of this question is don't bother about the uh, disease, the uh, the pathophysiology of the disease, the treatment of the disease. What we want you to understand is why you are studying this anatomy. Why should it matter that it is skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle? In the end, everything is muscle. You will say that. But why should you bother? Is because of this. How do you correlate it? It is in the periphery. It is arising from the lower limb. Yes, it's going to be easy with all these clues. Yes, and that is why it arises from skeletal muscle. So that is why you know the importance of reading the anatomy of the muscle, the histology of the muscle. Next, very good, very good. Very good um, Sai. Sai Vigneshwar. Okay, another one. Amitabh Bachchan was diagnosed to have myasthenia gravis after he complained of excessive weakness. This he uh, realized during the shooting of one of his movies. This condition is characterized by defect in smooth muscle, acetylcholine receptors, nerve supply to the muscle, thyroid problem. So, both C and B. So, uh, that is uh, Satish. The answer is B. It is not the nerve supply that uh, of the muscle that is, uh, in a way, you are right, good, because we, we spoke about the motor end plate and we spoke about acetylcholine receptors, which, is, which are affected here in this disease. So, in the end, you can say that... Uh, 
uh, the nerve supply to the muscle is affected, but the first choice of answer will be acetylcholine receptors. Very good. You thought of both the nerve supply, the motor end plate, the acetylcholine receptors, in which the acetylcholine receptors and the motor end plates are damaged. So thereby the nerve supply to the muscle also is affected and the patient is having, uh, or here the superstar is having weakness. But if the option is given to choose one, you would choose? You would choose? Option B. Come on, type out the answer. Option B. If it is uh, where uh, multiple uh, choices are allowed, like we do in our recalls, in surgery recall the other day, we had multiple uh, choice questions. Right now, I think uh, pediatric recall is going on where there will yes. be, where multiple qu answers will be accepted. That time you will think of both B and C. Excellent, Satish. I am very happy with your answer. Very, very well done. Next, direct answer, no uh, uh, more of memory. What is the line that bisects the dark band in the muscle? A band, I band, Z band, H band, M line. Yeah, Sai has answered option E. Uh, option E. Okay, any other try you want to give? Satish, would you like to try? Anybody else? So, I will make it simple now. A band is the dark band. We know that the second alphabet of dark is A, so dark band. I band is the light band. The second alphabet of uh, light is I. The I band is made up of thin filament. The Z line runs through the I band. Remember I told you, through the I band, the I band is uh, bisected by the Z line. The H band bi bisects the A band. So the dark band is bisected by the H band, the Z line bisects the I band, the M line runs through the H band. So M line uh, psi runs through the H band and the two uh, between two Z bands is the, can you type out the answer between two Z lines is the, what is that called? That unit is called as Between one Z line and the other Z line? Yes, it's we discussed this in Sanjitsa's class. It's called a... Anything related to the muscle, you'll think of the word sarco. So, sarco mere. So, again, I'll repeat. Okay. Uh, uh, Sai, there is the A band. A band is the dark band. There is the light band, which is the I band. The uh, Z line runs through the middle of the I band. The H band runs through the middle of the A band. The M line runs through the uh, middle of the H band. So your answer was M, by M line. M line runs through the middle of the H band. The H band runs through the middle of the A band. The Z line runs through the middle of the I band. Lot of this is a pure memory. I don't know how else I can make it simple for you. Uh, starting with the two bands, A band and I band. That is dark band and light band. Through the middle of the A band runs the uh, through the middle of the A band runs the H band. Through the middle of the H band runs the M line. On the other hand, there is the I band. The I band through the middle of the I band runs the Z line and between two consecutive Z lines is the sarcomere. Is it fine? Have I made it more complicated? Sai, so understood? Okay, I know a lot of memory. But the moment it comes to memory-based teaching, we don't like uh, students. <laughs> we want to understand. But here, uh, some things have to be uh, done by memory, so can't help it. Which muscle has visible st uh, cross striations? Skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, both A and B. 
none of the above. Come on, this is easy. A and B, Sai has answered. Both A and B, perfectly right, uh, Sai. So skeletal muscle has striations, cardiac muscles have striations, both are striated muscles. Um, the difference between the two is, again, I am reminding skeletal muscle is a uh, voluntary muscle, cardiac muscle is involuntary muscle. Smooth muscles are called as non-striated muscles for the simple reason that they do not have striations. So last two questions. Again, we come to Sai Vigneshwar's uh, worst nightmare, the bands. <laughs> what region is made up of thin filaments? A band, I band, Z, H, M line. I just now told you what is made up of thin filaments. Yes, the answer is I band. Uh, Sai, now you are beginning to like it. So shall we, again, shall we again revise our A and uh, um, all these bands? So the dark band is, as I'm saying, you will type the answer. The dark yeah, try doing is, it. Yeah, dark band is A band. Yes. Light band is? I band. Okay. Through the middle of the A band runs the which band? H band. Through okay. the middle of the H band runs the which line? M line. And through the middle of the I band runs the Z line. And between two Z line is the that golden word. No. Between two, two Z lines. What is that unit called between two Z lines? Something that starts with S. Anything related to the muscle, I told you. A sarcomere. Sarcomere. But good. At least you got the whole uh, concept. Uh, almost at, to the, at the back of your head. So with this, we'll move on to the final question. What is the plasma membrane of the muscle called as endomycium, sarcolemma, sarcoplasm, perimycium? Sorry. Correct. No, 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 no. Plasma membrane. Plasma membrane. Correct, correct. So what is the answer given? Uh, B, sir. Yeah. So remember now again, the outer connective tissue covering of a muscle is called as an epimysium. Within the muscle, there are subdivisions which are called as fascicles and the perimysium surrounds these individual muscle uh, fascicles. The endomysium covers individual muscle fibers. So that fascicles are bundles, muscle fibers. The plasma membrane is, is called as the sarcolemma. And the uh, cytoplasm is called as sarcoplasm. You'll get confused between cytoplasm and plasma membrane. The cytoplasm, sarcoplasm. The plasma membrane, sarcolemma. So with this, we come to the end of um, the histology on muscle. Uh, soon we'll have the lecture on um, general anatomy of the muscle. That time you should be prepared with this. Uh, histology of the muscle as well. Um, over to you, Aishwarya. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I was urging to, you know, make sure that you get some kind of voice rest. I'm so <laughs> sad that you're sick. Uh, and uh, But it's okay. You're going to get well soon. Very. Yeah, you know. yeah, I'm much, much better now. Actually, if you would have seen my state last week, it was horrible, but I'm much better now. Okay, so okay, so we all our prayers are there, and uh, students, it's a very important topic. Um, uh, sir has detailed it in a very neat and you know beautiful manner, and uh, the diagrams, the histology diagrams are very important for all the three: the, the smooth muscle, the skeletal muscle, and the cardiac muscle. And it is one of the easiest specimens also to identify. 
especially when you have the spotters and all they usually tend to keep some of the easiest one and it's one of them so make sure you learn the learn how to draw them and at least two important points just gather and keep so from sir's class today so that you get to write it in the spotters so apart from that uh, we'll be coming back uh, on friday uh, with the remaining anatomy topic of uh, smooth muscles with our dr sanjit sir so until then it's a uh, you know um, bye from all of us and um, thank you for attending today and sai get well soon you also all prayers with you as well um, hope otherwise everything is fine and uh, see you all on friday thank you sir thank you everyone thank you thank you everyone Good night.